Hello and welcome to this first episode in a new series where you will learn how to make a retro style Space Invaders game in Scratch 3.0. Now as we work through each episode in this series you will be learning more techniques within Scratch to produce a really enjoyable game whilst making use of really good programming techniques. In the last episode you'll even learn how to adjust your game to make use of a micro bit as a motion sensing controller for the spaceship. But let's start back at the beginning. In this episode you will be drawing the background for the levels and drawing the main spaceship sprite. So to get started uh, search for scratch or go to scratch.mit.edu and then click on the create button and start a new project. Now if you're anything like me you've probably got lots of projects that start with untitled so let's immediately give our uh, game a name and the game we're going to be making is called Alien Intruders. Uh, so let's give it that title. And as with all these things the first thing we want to do is get rid of that cat. So that's gone. So let's start by making our background. It's really simple. Just click uh, on the stage area here on the right. Click on backdrops and we've got our first backdrop. So here's where we can add the code for the backdrop uh, but we want to change the actual backdrops design here so we're going to name this costume as a level background okay and we're going to do a really simple gradient effect for the background so um, in order to do this uh, in order to fill on the whole background I'm going to switch to bitmap mode and then I'm just going to click on my paintbrush go to fill and on the drop down arrow I'm going to choose this vertical gradient where I can choose a start color and an end color. My start color, uh, I'm gonna choose this sort of uh, a bit of a dark purple color. And my end color, I'm gonna take the brightness all the way down to black. And I just need to click, and now I've got a really cool kind of gradient spacey background. Let's get started making our spaceship. So for this, uh, we have no sprites. We need to click down here and go to, uh, in fact, not click, just hover the mouse and then click on paint to create a brand new sprite and immediately we're going to name that sprite spaceship now again we want to be in the costumes tab because we're going to design uh, what our spaceship looks like and for this we're going to want to be working in vector mode uh, so if it says convert to bitmap down here all is well uh, but if it says convert to vector then click on that so you're in vector mode you'll know that you're in vector mode because you've got a lot more options up here so we're going to be using uh, the line tool in order to draw the outline of our spaceship. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm also going to make sure the outline is set to black. So if it's not, just get your color right down, your brightness right down. And where we can set the thickness, I'm going to change that to something a bit thicker, maybe sort of size 7. And it's a bit confusing in Scratch 3 whether you're zoomed in or not. So just make sure you press that equal sign to zoom out. And although you probably can't see it, there's what looks like a little smudgy circle in the middle. That's your center point. And we're going to try our best to draw our spaceship around this. So for the spaceship, I'm just going to do a really simple uh, line down here. Now, I'm going to bring my mouse to the end of that line and you'll see a circle appears. If I click and drag from there, it will do this as a continuous vector shape. And that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to bring across from there. And then I'm going to go back in and make sure I've got that circle, come back up here, again, click in there when I've got the circle, and drag until I get the circle at the other end. And that's given me now a single shape, okay? And we're going to fill this, so if I click on the lines of my shape, notice it selects the whole thing, so it's a continuous shape, and then I can set my fill colour. Now I'm going to use a kind of orangey kind of colour for my spaceship. Now for a little bit of nice design and shading, I'm going to do uh, an internal triangle here to give just a little bit of a 3D effect. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go back to my line tool um, and I'm going to choose a, a darker orange. Get a kind of orangey, a kind of rusty orange colour. And I'm just going to draw a line inside. It, try and get it close, but it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Again, making sure I've got the circle before I go on. Okay, and to the top one. And when that's done, I can click on that and I can again fill it in. Now to get the exact same color as the outline, I'm gonna use this color picker and I'm gonna move my mouse until the thick, uh, until the dark rusty color has been selected. And notice that circle, the surround of the circle changes to the color that we're gonna be picking. So click 
and select it and that creates a fill. And it looks quite nice but I've got a bit of overspill up here, it doesn't quite fill here. So I'm going to use this tool which is the reshaping tool and I'm going to click on my uh, spaceship and I'm going to zoom in again, go to the top point and I can click on that top point and drag it down until it perfectly fits inside and I can do the same at the bottom as well. Okay, so just click and drag down. Now notice mine's a little bit um, curved at the bottom, but I can change, with that selected, I can change to a pointed end, and it just gives me a nice sharp point. And let's just make sure this final corner's looking good as well. And if I zoom out, perfect, there's my really nice looking spaceship. Now, with everything done, I'm going to click on um, my arrow tool. I'm going to draw a box around all of that because those are actually two shapes and I'm just going to group them. So now when I click anywhere, I've got the whole lot and I'm just going to make sure I place it in the center of my sprite. Now, it would be nice to have some fire coming out of our spaceship, so let's draw that. I'm going to zoom in to the bottom of my spaceship. I'm going to get my line tool again and this time I'm going to use a sort of uh, orangey yellow. I'm going to make sure it's a bit more yellow than the orange of my spaceship and I'm going to draw uh, over the spaceship the outline of where my fire is going to be. And then I have to join up the rest of the shapes. I'm going to draw one more line across the top and now I can click on that shape and I can fill it to a yellow colour. And I'm just going to add some red or orange in there as well for the fire. So same thing. And fill that as well. And now I've got that fire made, I can select just by drawing a box around the two of them. Or I can click on one, hold my shift key and click on the other one. And I can group those. So now I have fire separate from my rocket. And I'm going to press the back button here and that pushes it to the back so it goes behind my rocket and I can see the fire there. Now it does look a bit big coming out here so I, because it's a separate object I can resize it um, until I'm happy. So if I click the equal sign again to zoom out there's my spaceship and I'm going to have a little bit of animation going on here so it looks like the fire is burning so I'm going to duplicate the whole thing I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to tweak my fire a bit using my reshape tool. Okay, and now I have a slightly different fire on costume 2 from costume 1. And now we just need to add some code to animate between those two costumes. So let's go to the code tab and I'm going to create um, a, a block that is going to be triggered when a particular message is going to be sent and it's going to be a start level message. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to do when I receive message one and I'm going to click on message one, do new message. I'm going to call this start level. So when the level begins, do this stuff. And the things I want to do, I want to make sure it's showing because it, it might have been hidden. And I'm going to start a forever loop that keeps switching between the two costumes. So I can go to control, forever, looks, next costume, and if I click on that, you'll see a preview. Now it's moving very quickly, so we need to put a little bit of a delay in there. So let's go to uh, control, wait one second, let's drop that inside the forever loop, but one second is too slow. Let's change that to 0.2 seconds, yeah that's okay maybe 0.1 seconds and you can adjust it for yours. I quite like that, that looks good. So now I've got my spaceship with its sort of fire breathing thing going on. Um, it's probably a bit big for my game so I'm just going to change the size now to maybe 40%, maybe 50%. Again you can adjust as you need to for your game. So we've made our background and we've drawn our spaceship and we've animated the spaceship as well. So the last thing I want to do is add a really nice kind of star field effect to this background so that it looks kind of a bit more spacey. So to do that I'm going to create a new sprite and I'm going to call it star field. And I need to make sure I'm setting the x and y values for this new sprite to 0, 0. And I'm going to be working in bitmap mode for this. And all I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna get a paintbrush with dots that are only one pixel in size and I'm gonna choose some light colors, maybe a light yellow. So I'm gonna change that saturation right down so it's quite a light yellow color, very pale. And I'm just gonna randomly click around. Now, if it seems like nothing's appearing, you might just need to increase your paintbrush to maybe size two. And click around randomly and you should start seeing stars appearing in your um, stage. So again, feel free to try a few different colors. After all, space is a, a wash with different colors. And then once you've finished doing that, just set the size to 150. And now we're gonna add some code to make this kind of spin. So let's go to code. And again, we're gonna say um, when I receive start level. So that's here, when I receive start level. If it doesn't say start level there, just choose whatever it says there and click start level from the menu. And we just want this to start rotating. So we're gonna make sure that we go to zero, zero in case it's been moved, because it's gotta sort of rotate around the center point. And we're going to use a forever motion. And we can just turn clockwise or anti-clockwise up to you one degree. If I click on that to get a preview, you'll see that your stars start spinning and glistening. If you think that's moving too quickly, you could try adding a weight in there. Uh, if you wanna make it move faster, you can move more degrees each time, but you will end up giving your players a little bit of nausea if it goes too quickly. But later in the game, you might wanna speed it up to add intensity, maybe when ammo's running out or aliens are getting closer, uh, and you can use that to add a bit more dramatic effect. Now there's just one other thing that I forgot to add. Um, we need to add a little bit of code just to make this disappear and our sp spaceship disappear when we don't want to be showing game elements on the screen. So I'm gonna go to events, when I receive, and I'm gonna drop down menu, do new message, hide game elements. And when I get that message, I'm going to want to stop everything this sprite is doing and then hide. So I can go to control and where it says stop all, I'm just gonna drag that and change that to stop other scripts in sprite. So that will stop this forever loop going. And then I can just hide. And if I'm gonna hide the star field, that means when I want this to actually appear later, when we run the game, I'm gonna to need to add a show up here to start level. Whenever you use a hide, you always need to add a show to make sure it appears. So I can just click on this to test. It's gone, it's back. Now, in order to do the same thing for my spaceship, I'm gonna to want to use um, this backpack. So I'm gonna click on the backpack to open up. I drag my code onto there, and now I can reuse it elsewhere. So if I go to my spaceship, I can drag that code out, and lo and behold, I have the same code now, which I can click on, and so disappears my spaceship, and now it reappears as well. So that's everything for this first part. All you need to do um, for your own games is draw your background, draw your spaceship, make it animated, use the vector drawing mode, and then if you want to add a cool star field effect, create a new sprite for that and add the code to make it spin. Once you've done all of that, you'll be ready to join me for the second video.